This is the new Mercedes E-Class, the sixth generation of the German brand's iconic saloon, featuring a huge overhaul in tech and some major updates to the plug-in hybrid versions. In this video, we're telling you 10 things you need to know about it. Before we start, subscribe to our channel to see lots more new car reveals and reviews, and go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car. The E-Class name first appeared on a Mercedes back in 1993 with the facelifted W124. Over the years, it's traded blows with its main heavyweight rival, the BMW 5 Series. Both are big luxury saloons that have always majored on everything that makes a good luxury car. But the latest 5 Series has always comfortably had the better of the fifth generation E-Class. Better to drive and better to sit in, overall, it's just a more talented and polished product. But 30 years on from the first E-Class, we now have the sixth generation of Mercedes saloon, codenamed W214. And the dominance of the 5 Series looks set to be seriously under threat. So what exactly is new? Well, for a start, it's been treated to an updated design. The E-Class gets a larger grille, and buyers can even illuminate its surroundings as an optional extra. It also has a longer bonnet than before, different headlights, and optional flush door handles. And these tweaks mean the exterior styling is now even closer to what the smaller C-Class and larger S-Class look like. Some other manufacturers have spoken out about wanting to avoid this kind of Russian doll style of design, but it's something Mercedes has embraced. The new E-Class is 26mm longer, 28mm wider, and the same height as its predecessor. The distance between the front and rear wheels is 22 millimeters longer, which should make rear seat space more accommodating than the outgoing E-Class, which, to be honest, wasn't particularly great in that area. The boot, meanwhile, gets exactly the same capacity as before. And these dimensions, by the way, make this very similar to the fully electric Mercedes EQE. But while the change in styling and size isn't drastic, the changes to the interior are. A comprehensive reworking has given the new E-Class a snazzy screen-filled interior with a 12.3-inch digital driver display, a 14.4-inch infotainment screen, and, if the option is ticked, a super screen which joins the infotainment system to another 12.3-inch display for the front passenger. These screens look very impressive, and we know that Mercedes is definitely capable of making very good infotainment systems. But this layout and design does mean there's a serious lack of physical buttons in the interior. So controlling features on the infotainment will need to be done via the voice command system, the touchpads on the steering wheel, or the screens themselves. Of course, physical buttons are the simplest and safest way to adjust things on the move. And it is a shame Mercedes has gotten rid of the helpful trackpad on the center console the previous E-Class had. If you opt for the super screen, you can also get a camera on the dashboard to take selfies with. Probably more relevant, it also means you can join video meetings from the car when you're stationary, which very much feels like the modern day equivalent of having an inbuilt phone in your executive saloon from the 90s. But don't worry, a selfie cam isn't the pinnacle of the new tech that's on offer in the new E-Class. There's an optional intelligent parking pilot function featuring level four autonomous driving technology, which allows the new E-Class to park fully automatically without a driver. This is something previously only available with the S-Class, but you can only do this where laws allow. Again, like the new S-Class, you'll also be able to get rear wheel steering as an optional extra on the E-Class, which will reduce the turning circle and aid high speed stability. This is one of Mercedes' last dedicated internal combustion engine models before it goes electric only. The new E-Class will initially be sold with a choice of mild hybrid, four-cylinder and six-cylinder petrol and diesel engines, with power output spanning 194 brake horsepower to 375 brake horsepower. The engines confirmed straight away at launch include the E200 and the E220D, the latter of which you can have with four-wheel drive. A nine-speed automatic gearbox comes as standard. Perhaps the most eye-catching versions of the E-Class at launch are the plug-in hybrid models, the E300E and the E400E. The big change with these setups from before is the size of the battery. At 24.1 kilowatt hours, it boasts an added 10.6 kilowatt hours of capacity, giving the new models greatly increased electric ranges of up to 69 miles officially. This is the same battery that you find in the plug-in S-Class. 
Of course, in real world driving conditions, it will be much less than the official figures, but that still puts the new E-Class plug-in among the best models when it comes to pure electric range. And that is one area where BMW is seriously lagging behind with its saloons. Further developments brought to the plug-in hybrids include higher charging rates. An onboard charger allows AC charging at up to 11 kilowatts, with DC rapid charging now up to 55 kilowatts. That is a very useful increase, because with most plug-in hybrids, the slow charging speeds they have mean you can't use rapid public chargers. So whenever you want a top up from empty, in most cases, it will always take hours. But with the new E-Class, at 55 kilowatts, you can now charge from flat to full in just 30 minutes. And a plug-in hybrid diesel option will join the lineup later on. For a roundup of the best plug-in hybrid models you can buy right now, click on the link at the top of the screen. Over the years, the E-Class has usually spawned coupe and cabriolet versions, but that won't be the case for this new model, or at least not directly. That's because the new CLE model line from Mercedes will represent a combination of the coupe and cabriolet versions of the C-Class and E-Class. But there will still be an E-Class estate, which is set to launch in the UK in December 2023. And we'll also see a more off-road focused E-Class all-terrain next year. Nothing official has been confirmed, but it's expected that E-Class will start at more than £50,000, which is a hefty jump up from the entry point of the 5 Series lineup. But it does still offer some breathing space before the fully electric EQE range starts at around the £75,000 mark. So that is everything we know so far about the new E-Class. If you want to see our full review of the car as soon as we've driven it, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you do, it will mean you're the first to see all of our new car reveals and reviews as soon as they go live. Tell us what you think of the new E-Class in the comments below and go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car.